construction. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Forgive me, my brothers and sisters. Matins is a category of service known as an office. Offices are common prayers that can be prayed without a priest if one is not available or one wants to serve at home. Other offices include Vespers, Compline, Akathis, Supplicatory Canons, and the Hours. Just like any other service in the church, Matins has various themes. One theme is that of the fall of mankind. We join Adam in his weakness. As Father Alexander Schmemann describes it in For the Life of the World, when we first wake up, the initial sensation is always that of illumination. We are at our weakest, at our most helpless. It is like a man's first real experience of life in all its absurdity and solitude at first kept from him by family warmth. We discover every morning in the amorphous darkness, the inertia of life. And while Matins, and especially the six Psalms, does call us to experience this darkness, it does not leave us there. This brings us to the second thing. To continue with Father Alexander's meditation, the first theme of Matins is the coming of light into darkness. It begins not like Vespers with the creation, but with the fall. Yes, in this very helplessness and despair, there is hidden expectation, a thirst and hunger. And within this scene, the church declares her joy, not only against the grain of natural life, but fulfilling it. The church announces every morning that God is the Lord, and she begins to organize life around God. During matins, the sun itself rises, dispelling the darkness of the world. And in this, the church sees the rising of the true light of the world, the sun of God. Along with this theme of the fall, we also remember that light has dawned in the world through Jesus Christ. The matin service guides the believer from the fall to illumination. The matin service is an amalgamation of several services. They are the royal office, the nocturnal office. The nocturnal office is the six psalms through the cathisma. The cathedral vigil from the polyaleos through having beheld the resurrection of Christ. And the morning office from Psalm 50 through to the end. Because of its flexibility, the matins framework in the service serves as a basis for other things like the funeral service, the memorial panahita, and various malevens, which are prayer services for specific means and needs. When done in its entire monastic force <laughs> form, matins takes several hours. The version we use, which comes from our Ukrainian Orthodox prayer book, takes around an hour and a half. So the first part is the royal office, and we'll get started on that in just a moment. This first part is sometimes skipped in parish use. It's the royal beginning, so-called because the psalms that can be chanted, which we don't, psalms are always the first thing cut when time is short. Psalms 19 and 20 speak of the king of kings. It also has trapars in honor of the emperor. O Lord, save your people, does double duty in that sense, and litanies for the civil authorities. The royal office section, like I said, is sometimes skipped, but there are important things that occur then as well. We'll pause again before the six psalms. We offer the incense of Christ our God, the Holy Spirit, the church has received upon him, we offer to sit down and return to the grace of God. Blessed is our God, always, now, and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Glory to you, our God, glory to you. Everything comes to the Spirit of truth, everywhere, present, and filling all things. 
Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O Christ God, you are voluntarily laid on the cross. Grant your bounty to the nation bearing your name. Make all your devout faithful glad through your power. Grant them the victory over their enemies through the invincible trophy, your weapon of peace, both now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Steadfast champion who cannot be put to confusion, holy birth giver of God, do not despise our prayers. Make from the lives of Christians and stable Orthodox our God-loving people. Grant them victory from on high, for you gave birth to God, only blessed Lady. Have mercy on us, God, in your great loving kindness. We pray you, hear us, and have mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for our holy Ukrainian Orthodox Church, for our Metropolitan Intimates and Tony, for our Archbishop Intimates Daniel, and for all our brethren in Christ. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for our God-loving and God-protected country, the United States of America, for the governments and armed forces, and for all the people, for our God-loving and God-protected ancestral homeland, Ukraine, for all of our ancestral homelands and their people. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for all our brethren and all Christians. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. For you are a good and loving God, and to you we give glory. To the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. In the name of the Lord, Father, bless. Glory to the Holy Consubstantial, life-giving and undivided Trinity, always, now and ever, and to the ages of Amen. Glory to God in the highest, on earth peace, goodwill among men. Glory to God in the highest, on earth peace, goodwill among men. Glory to God in the highest, on earth peace, goodwill among men. O Lord, thou shalt open my lips, and thou shalt declare thy praise. Okay, for the, remember this is, so I told you it's going to offend your liturgical sensibilities, right? This is a time when we are called to quietness, right? And I just interrupted you breaking that quiet, so forgive me, reader. So about the six psalms, Father John Whiteford writes, the faithful should beware of the fact that the reading of the six psalms is one of the most important points in the service, a time when all should put aside other thoughts, stand quietly, and concentrate on these penitential prayers. The reading does not constitute a pause in divine services, a time during which to go for a walk outside or to talk to one's neighbor. It is one of the holiest moments in the entire service. During this time, the lights are turned off and the lampadas remain unlit. We keep one light on so that our reader can see the words. This is so that we can better contemplate our mortality and the futility of a life lived separate from God. Some believers close their eyes so they, that they are not distracted as they Keep their mind in hell and despair not, St. Cyril. Tears of repentance, whether metaphorical or real, are entirely appropriate during this time. And I will pause, at, pause after each of the psalms. Okay. O Lord, thou shalt open my lips, and my mouth shall declare thy praise. O Lord, why are they multiplied that afflict me? Many rise up against me. They say unto my soul, there is no salvation for him and his God. But thou, O Lord, art my help and my glory to lift up of my head. I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy mountain. I laid me down and slept, but I woke, for the Lord will help me. I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people that set themselves against me round about. Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God, for thou hast hidden all without a cause for mine enemies. The teeth of sinners hast thou broken salvation of the Lord, and thy blessings upon thy people. I laid me down and slept, but I woke, for the Lord will help me. In this psalm, Psalm 3, Father Patrick Reardon writes about it saying, we have conflict here and the distress that conflict brings. For fighting battles is one of the major motives of the book of Psalms. This is not a prayer book for the non-combatant and 
unless a person is actually engaged in hostilities, it is difficult to see how he can pray Psalm 3. Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God, for you have smitten all my enemies on the jaw. You have broken the teeth of the ungodly. The Psalms are prayers for those engaged in an ongoing spiritual conflict. No one else need bother even opening the book. And what are our resources in this battle? It's in the Psalms. But you, O Lord, are a shield to me, my glory and my head's support. I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me from his holy hill. I will not fear the thousands that confront me round about. Salvation is the Lord, and your blessing rests upon your people. We'll now continue with Psalm 37. O Lord, rebuke me not in thine anger, nor chase me in thy wrath. For thine hours are fasted in me, and thou hast laid thy hand heavily upon me. There is no healing in my flesh in the face of thy wrath. There is no peace in my bones in the face of my sins. For my iniquities are risen up higher than my head. As a heavy burden have they pressed heavily upon me. My bruises are become noisome and corrupt in the face of my folly. I have been wretched and utterly bowed down until the end. All day long I went with a downcast face. For my loins are filled with mockings and there is no healing in my flesh. I am afflicted and humbled exceedingly. I have roared from the groanings of my heart. O oh, Lord, before thee is all my desire. And my groaning is not hid from thee. My heart is troubled, my strength has failed me, the light of mine eyes even that is not with me. My friends and my neighbors drew nigh over against me and stood, and my nearest of kin stood afar off. They that sought after my soul used violence, they that sought evils to restate vain things, and craftinesses all day long did they meditate. But as for me, like a deaf man, I heard them not, and was as a speechless man that openeth not his mouth. I became as a man that heareth not, and hath in his mouth no reproofs. For in thee have I hoped, O Lord. Thou will hearken unto me, O Lord my God. For I said, Let never mine enemies rejoice over me. Yea, when my feet were shaken, those men spake boastful words against me. For I am ready for scourges, and my sorrows continually before me. I will declare mine iniquity, I will take heed concerning my sin. But mine enemies live are made stronger than I. They that hated me are unjustly are multiplied. They that render me evil for good slander me, because I pursued goodness. Forsake me not, O Lord my God, depart not from me. Be attentive unto my help, O Lord of my salvation. Forsake me not, O Lord my God, depart not from me. Be attentive unto my help, O Lord of my salvation. Again, turning to Father Patrick Reardon, he writes, Again, there are enemies. The demons are the only enemies of the man who correctly prays the book of Psalms. Nowhere does Holy Scripture exhort us to forgive or pity the demons. They are the only true enemies that our prayer recognizes. Unlike human enemies who are to be prayed for, the demons are always to be prayed against. Our fight with them is unsleeping, as is their fight with us, plotting our ruin. As the psalmist says, those also who seek my life lay snares for me, those who seek my hurt speak of destruction and plan deception all the day long. We'll now continue with Psalm 62. O oh God, my God, unto thee I rise early at dawn. My soul hath thirsted for thee. How often hath my flesh longed after thee in a land barren and untrodden and unwatered. So in the sanctuary I have appeared before thee to see thy power and thy glory. For thy mercy is better than lies. My lips shall praise thee. So shall I bless thee in my life. And in my, thy name will I lift up my hands. As with marrow and fatness shall my soul be filled, with lips of rejoicing shall my mouth praise thee. If I remember thee on my bed at dawn, I meditate on thee, for thou art become my helper, in the shelter of thy wings will I rejoice. My soul hath cleaved after thee, thy right hand has been quick to help me, but as for these in vain they have sought after my soul, they shall go into the uttermost parts of the earth, they shall be surrendered unto the edge of the sword, portions for foxes shall they be, but the king shall be glad in God, everyone shall be praised and sweareth by him. For the mouth of them is stopped that speaketh unjust things. At dawn I meditate on thee, for thou art become my helper. In the shelter of thy wings will I rejoice. My soul hath cleaved after thee, thy right hand has been quick to help me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory to thee, O God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory to thee, O God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory to thee, O God. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. So 
Father Patrick Reardon writes about that Psalm 62 as one of the Bible's most intense prayers of yearning. The words of Psalm 62 open the mind to what the Holy Spirit prays to God within our souls. At the same time, the soul's spiritual enemies are ever present, and they too are referenced when our psalm speaks of those who vainly seek my soul, those destined to be delivered to the hands of the sword and to become the portion of foxes. As a prayer of longing for communion with God, Psalm 62 is especially to be recommended as partial preparation for Holy Communion. I'm going to go ahead and give the um, meditation on Psalm 87. This is the one that takes us down deepest into the depths of our despair that we would and should experience were we to live a life separated from God. As Father Patrick Reardon writes, one occasionally meets pagans and unbelievers who avow that they are not afraid to die. Well, this psalm suggests that maybe they should be. In line after line of Psalm 87, a writer under the guidance of the imp an impulse of the Holy Spirit says, in the sharpest terms, that death is a most terrifying prospect. O oh Lord, God of my salvation, by day I have cried at night before thee. Let my prayer come before thee, bow down on ear unto my supplication. For filled with evils is my soul, my life unto Hades hath drawn nigh. I am counted with those that go down in the pit. I have become as a man without help, free among the dead, like the bodies of the slain that sleep in the grave, whom thou rememberest no more, and they are cut off from thy hand. They lay me down in the lowest pit, in darkness and in shadow of death. Against me is thine anger made strong, all thy bills hath thou brought upon me. Thou hast removed my friends afar from me, they have made me an abomination unto themselves. I have been delivered up, have not come forth. Mine eyes are grown weak from poverty. I have cried unto thee, O Lord, the whole day long. I have stretched out my hands unto thee. Nay, for the dead wilt thou work wonders, or shall physicians raise them up, that they may give thanks unto thee? Nay, shall any of the grave tell thy mercy and thy truth in that destruction? Nay, shall thy wonders be known in the darkness, and thy righteousness in the land that is forgotten? But as for me unto thee, O Lord, have I cried in the morning? Shall I put my prayer come before thee? Wherefore, O Lord, doth thou cast off my soul, and turnest thy face away from me? A poor man am I, in troubles from my youth. Yea, having been exalted, I was humbled and brought to distress. Thy furies have passed upon me, and thy terror has sorely troubled me. They came around about me like water all day long, they compassed me about together. Thou hast removed afar from me friend and neighbor, and mine acquaintance because of my misery. O Lord God of my salvation, by day I have cried at night before thee. Let my prayer come before thee, bow down on ear unto my supplication. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all with within me bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all he hath done for thee, who is gracious on all thy iniquities, who healeth all thy infirmities, who redeemeth thy life from corruption, who crowneth thee with mercy and compassion, who hath filled thy desire with good things, thy youth shall be renewed as the eagles. The Lord performeth deeds of mercy and executes judgment for all them that are wronged. <clears throat> he hath made his ways known unto Moses, unto the sons of Israel, things that he hath willed. Compassion and merciful is the Lord, long suffering and plenteous of mercy. Not unto the end will he be angered, neither unto eternity will he be wroth. Not according to our iniquities hath he dealt with us, neither according to our sins hath he rewarded us. For according to the height of heaven from the earth, the Lord has made his mercy to prevail over them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he hath removed our iniquities from us. Like as a father hath compassion upon his sons, so hath the Lord of compassion upon them that fear him. For he knoweth whereof we are made, he hath remembered that we are dust. As for man, his days are like grass, as a flower of the field, so shall he blossom forth. For when the wind is passed over it, then it shall be gone. No longer will it know the place thereof. But the mercy of the Lord is from eternity, even unto eternity, upon them that fear him. And his righteousness is upon the sons of sons, upon them that keep his testament and remember his commandments to do them. The Lord in heaven hath prepared his throne, his kingdom ruleth over all. Bless the Lord, all ye his angels, mighty in strength, that perform his word, to hear the voice of his words. Bless the Lord, all ye his hosts, his ministers that do his will. Bless the Lord, all ye his works in every place of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul, in every place of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. In that psalm, about that psalm, Father Patrick Reardon writes, In Psalm 102, 
the soul is called to the contemplation of God's infinite forgiving mercy. As St. Paul writes to the Romans, The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and plenteous in mercy. He, is not, he has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. Indeed not. For while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Despair not. O oh Lord, hear my prayer, hear, hear unto my supplication and thy truth. Hearken unto me in thy righteousness. Enter not into judgment with thy servant, for in thy sight shall no man living be justified. For the enemy hath persecuted my soul, he hath humbled my life down to the earth. He hath sat me in darkness as those have been long dead. My spirit within me has become despondent. Within me my heart is troubled. I remember days of old. I meditated on all thy works. I pondered on the creations of thy hands. I stretched forth my hands unto thee. My soul thirsted after thee like waterless land. Quickly hear me, O Lord. My spirit hath fainted away. Turn not thy face away from me, lest I be like unto them that go down into the pit. Cause me to hear thy mercy in the morning, for in thee have I put my hope. Cause me to know, O Lord, the way wherein I should walk, for unto thee have I lifted up my soul. Rescue me from mine enemies, O Lord. Unto thee have I fled for refuge. Teach me to do thy will, for thou art my God. Thy good spirit shall lead me in the land of uprightness. For thy name's sake, <clears throat> O Lord, shall thou quicken me. And in thy righteousness shall thou bring my soul out of affliction. And in thy mercy shall thou utterly destroy mine enemies. And thou shalt cut off all them and afflict my soul, for I am thy servant. Hearken unto me, O Lord, in thy righteousness. And enter not into judgment with thy servant. Hearken, O Lord, unto me, O Lord, in my righteousness. And enter not into judgment with thy servant. Thy good spirit shall lead me in the land of uprightness. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory to thee, O God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory to thee, O God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory to thee, O God. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and interrupt the deacon now that he's ready to go. And please know, if you're watching this and you're a liturgist, don't look to this for the, the, the rules on how to serve it. Our rules on how to serve it are being adjusted for pastoral need. Um, if you want to learn how to serve matins, <laughs> you've probably got the wrong guy. <laughs> Venerable, Bede, Venerable Bede writes about Psalm 142. This history, how David was persecuted by his son is well known from the lesson in Kings. And this psalm, this similitude, as some will have it, about David and his son, is extended to every Christian who is harassed in the bitterness of this world by raging sins, as it were, his own children. But against this is opposed remedial penitence, which this psalm contains. Now we're going into a, a different, we're moving from the six psalms, and you're going to notice some differences in the environment, right? We started crossing ourselves again as we came out of those six psalms with the alleluias. And now we move into the great litany, God is the Lord, and the resurrection for par. About this, archpriest Dimitri Sokolov writes, After the six psalms, we offer up to God our petitions for the granting of spiritual and bodily mercies in the words of the great litany. Then we sing a hymn of praise to God, who hath descended to earth for our salvation, a continuation to the angelic hymn, God is the Lord and hath appeared unto us. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. To this hymn is added the tapar, or the feast, or the resurrection in this case, as a reminder of the mercies bestowed upon us through the incarnation of the Son of God. While the hymn God is the Lord and the Trapar are being sung, the illumination of the church is increased to signify that Christ, having come, is the light of the world. After this, in a full kind of monastic version for us, if we were willing to wake up earlier, and that's me on me, not you, uh, we would do the psalms and hymns of the Kathisma, the sitting psalms, they would then be sung. But now we turn to the great litany. God bless you. The lights come on now. They can start coming on. 
In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world and for the welfare of the holy churches of God and for the union of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy temple and for those who enter here with faith, reverence, and the fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our Metropolitan, his eminent Antonio, for our Archbishop, his eminence Daniel, for the Reverend Presbyters, the deacons in Christ, and for all the clergy and the people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our God-loving and God-protected country, the United States of America, for the government and armed forces, and for all the people, for our God-loving and God-protected ancestral homelands, Ukraine, and of all ancestral homelands, and for all their peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this city, for every city, community, and for the faithful who dwell in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For seasonable weather and abundance of the fruits of the earth and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Those who travel by land, sea, and air for the sick, the suffering, for captives, and for the salvation of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and distress, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and preserve us, God, by your grace. Lord, have mercy. Remembering your most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious Lady, the birth giver of God and ever Virgin Mary, together with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another in all our life to Christ our God. To you, Lord. For to you are due all glory, honor, and worship, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. God is the Lord and has revealed himself to us. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. God is the Lord and has revealed himself to us. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Encircling me they surround me, but in the name of the Lord I repulse them. God is the Lord revealed himself to us. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. I shall not die but live, and I will tell of the works of the Lord. God is the Lord, and has revealed himself to us. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This came about the Lord, and it is wondrous in our eyes. God is the Lord, and has revealed himself to us. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. When the stone had been sealed by the Jews, while the soldiers were guarding your most pure body, you rose on the third day, O Savior, granting life to the world. The powers of heaven therefore cry to you, O giver of life. Glory to your holy resurrection, O Christ. Glory. Glory to your dispensation, O lover of mankind. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. When Gabriel announced to you, O virgin, saying, Rejoice! With that word, the Master of all was incarnate in you. The Holy 
the next section that we will pray is the Palioleos. And Palioleos is the Greek for much mercy. And it consists of Psalms 134 and 135. So these two psalms constitute the third reading of the Psalter at Matins on great feasts and Sundays. And on all other vigil or Palioleos reign peace. And the name Palioleos, again, arises from the repetition of the phrase, for his mercy endureth forever, in Psalm 135. On the three Sundays, which immediately precede Great Lent, Lent Psalm 136, by the waters of Babylon, is added. In parish practice, the Palioleos is usually abbreviated. The abbreviated version leaves out examples of the many ways God has demonstrated his mercy throughout history, including defeating the Nephilim, Nephilim king Og of Bashan, the last of the Rephaim. In general, the Palioleos matches Israel's freedom from slavery and conquering of the Holy Land to all Christians' deliverance from bondage to sin through baptism and chrismation. This is one of the most festive moments of a vigil, when the royal doors are open and the clergy begin their censing. I'm going to sing this one. Praise ye the name of the Lord, O ye servants, ye servants of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise be the Lord out of Zion who dwelleth, who dwelleth at Jerusalem. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Oh, give thanks unto the God of heaven, for his mercy endureth forever. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The next part of the service is the resurrectional Evlo Hatheria. The Palioleos is followed by the resurrection trapars that celebrate, among other things, and you'll hear this, the witness of the myrrh bearing women. These hymns are separated by Psalm verse 118.12, reminding us that following God's statutes allow us to participate in the resurrection. Following that will come the hymns of ascent. Now, this is another section, much to the Ongoing learning of patience to my dear reader, Andrew. This is another portion that is much abbreviated in our tradition. There are many songs that have been composed for this section. They are related to the Psalms of Ascent. These are Psalms 119 to 134 that in our tradition we know most fully, or I know most fully, because we sing them at pre-sanctified liturgy. These are the Psalms that were sung on the way up to the temple in Jerusalem. Symbolically, we ascend in them towards the pinnacle of the matin service, the proclamation of the resurrection gospel and the hymn of resurrection. The only section that we usually sing of these is the haunting and beautiful. From my youth, many passions have fought against me. Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. The company of angels was amazed, beholding thee, O Savior, numbered among the dead. Who has destroyed the power of death and raised up Adam with thyself, setting all men free from hell? Blessed art thou, O Lord. Teach me thy statutes. Why? Mingle ye sweet smelling ointment. With tears of pity, O ye women disciples. 
But the angel who shone as lightning within the tomb, to the murmuring women, behold the tomb and understand that the Savior is risen from the grave. Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. The women bearing sweet that smelling ointment, hastened early in the morning to thy tomb to lament me. But the angel arose before them and said, The time for lamentation has ceased, weep not. But tell the apostles of the resurrection, Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. The women bearing sweet smelling ointment came lamenting to thy tomb, O Savior. But they heard an angel say to them, why can't ye the living among the dead? For it's God, he has risen from the tomb. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. We worship the Father, together with the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is one in essence, as we cry with the seraphim. Holy, holy, holy art thou, O Lord, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages, amen. O virgin who has born the giver of life, thou hast delivered Adam from sin, and to Eve, thou hast brought joy in place of sorrow. He who took flight from thee, he who is both God and man, has raised up once more those who had fallen from life. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory to thee, O God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory to thee, O God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory to thee, O God. From my youth, many passions have fought against me. But do thou help me and save me, O my Savior. You who hate Zion shall be put to shame by the Lord, you shall be withered up like grass by the fire. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Every soul is enlivened by the Holy Spirit and is exalted in purity, illumined by the Holy Trinity in a sacred mystery. We are going to have the proclamation of the gospel. The gospel is preceded by two prokeminants, or pieces of psalm. The first, uh, let everything that has, the first is the one that rotates based on our week in the Octoikos, our eight week cycle. And then it's followed by, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Now, to give any math geeks something to chew on, we rotate through the cycle of 11 proclamations of the gospel. Now, you can figure out how often those line up with the prokemen from the Octoikos. One tradition has this resurrection gospel proclaimed from the south side of the altar on Sundays, towards the north, proclaiming Christ's victory over the forces of evil, which sacred geography has residing to the north. The gospel reading is followed by the last part of the cathedral vigil portion of Matins, the hymn, having beheld the resurrection of Christ. 
during this time, during this hymn, the people are invited to come forward and venerate the gospel. Wisdom, let us attend. Serpent came on the first tone. Now I will arise, says the Lord. I will set him in safety and speak freely in him. Now I will arise, says the Lord. I will set him in safety and speak freely in him. The words of the Lord are pure words. Now I arise, says the Lord. I will set him in safety and speak freely in him. Now I will arise, says the Lord. I will set him in safety and speak freely in him. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For you are holy, our God, and you abide in your saints. And to you we give glory. To the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his strength. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. That we may be counted worthy to hear the Holy Gospel. Let us pray to the Lord God. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Wisdom, let us stand arise and listen to the Holy Gospel. Peace be with you all. And with your spirit. The readings from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, our Lord. Glory to you. Let us be attentive. At that time, the first day of the week, cometh Mary Magdalene early when it was yet dark, unto the sepulchre, and seeth the stone taken away from the sepulchre. Then she runneth, and cometh to Simon Peter, and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved, and saith unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre, and we know not where they have laid him. Peter therefore went forth, and that other disciple, and came to the sepulchre, so they ran both together, and the other disciple did outrun Peter, and came first to the sepulcher. And he, stooping down and looking in, saw the linen clothes lying, yet went he not in. Then cometh Simon Peter following him, and went into the sepulcher, and seeth the linen clothes lie, and the napkin that was about his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Then went in also that other disciple, which came first to the sepulcher, and he saw and believed. For as yet they knew not the scripture, that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away again unto their own home. Glory to you, our Lord, glory to you. Having beheld the resurrection of Christ, let us worship the Holy Lord Jesus, the only sinless one. We venerate your cross, O Christ, and we praise and glorify your holy resurrection. For you are our God, we know no other but you. We call on your name, come all you faithful. Let us venerate the holy resurrection of Christ. For both of the cross of joy coming to all the world. Ever blessing the Lord, let us praise his resurrection. For in bearing the cross for us. He has destroyed death by death. 
Have mercy on me, O God, according to thy great mercy, and according to the multitude of thy compassions, blot out my transgressions, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my iniquity, my sin is ever before me. Against thee only have I sinned, and done this evil before thee, that thou mightest be justified in thy words, and prevail, and thou art judged. For behold, I was conceived in iniquities, and in sin did my mother bear me. For behold, thou hast loved truth, and hid in secret things thy wisdom, hast thou made manifest unto me. Thou shalt straighten me with hyssop, and I shall be made clean. Thou shalt wash me, and I shall be made whiter than snow. Thou shalt make me hear joy and gladness, the bones of the humble day shall rejoice. Turn thy face away from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, with thy governing spirit establish me. I shall cease transgressors thy ways, the ungodly shall turn back unto thee. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, thou God of my salvation. My tongue shall rejoice in thy righteousness. O Lord, thou shalt open my lips, and my mouth shall declare thy praise. For if thou desire sacrifice, I have given it. With whole burnt offerings shall I not be pleased. A sacrifice unto God is a broken spirit. A heart that is broken and humbled, God will not despise. Be good, O Lord, thy good pleasure and design, and let the walls of Jerusalem be builded. Then shall thou be pleased with a sacrifice of righteousness, with oblation and whole burnt offering. Then shall they offer bullocks upon thine altar. Okay, so you've noticed maybe a change of tone there. We had the proclamation of the gospel and the celebration of the resurrection, the resurrection hymn. And now we change the tenor just a little bit. Remember, up, upward spirals. Right? And we begin with Psalm 50, the morning office proper. And it begins with that. And then we have some beautiful hymns of repentance. And then we have the deacon's prayer. And you'll notice when you hear it that this prayer is very similar to the one offered at Great Vespers when the Latia is served. This is then followed by one of the most variable of all portions of Matins, the canon. In its present form, each of the nine sections of the canon begins with an ode <laughs> short, that is designed to connect specific Old Testament themes to the gospel. Two notable things that happen, <laughs> among many, are the singing of the resurrection conduct after the sixth ode. That's a little liturgical trick for readers when they're trying to find the hymns for the day, right? And the Magnificat, sung before the ninth ode. And this Magnificat is accompanied by a full sensing by the deacon. After this, I want to make this the last pause so that I can continue my priestly duties of hearing confessions and finishing the proscomedia, um, there we have the praises and the doxology. So the praises are Psalms 148 through 150. There's a brief dialogue that follows the canon between the deacon and the kleros about the holiness of the Lord God. And then the praises begin. Now, this structure of the praises is very similar to the structure of Lord I Call at Vespers, with the first few verses being sung in the tone of the week, the bulk of the psalms then being plain chanted, and then the final few verses plain chanted in alternation with hymns that are sung in the tone of the week. The now and never of Bohorodijan, or song to the Theotokos, is always the same word sung in tone two at Sunday matins, unless it's a feast as well as a Sunday. That's a future class. And then after the praises come the great doxology. From Father Dmitri Sokolov, after the psalms of praise with their hymns have been chanted, the holy doors are opened, and the priest calls out, Glory to you who has shown us the light, thus inviting the faithful to glorify God for having given us the light of the Spirit, Christ the Savior, who came into the world to illumine mankind, which had theretofore lived in the darkness of superstitions and iniquities. So that's the way we go into the great doxology. And during that doxology, the deacon performs the great sensing of the proscomedia, which is the, the rite that is served up preparing the gifts. And in so doing, he is purifying us and the worship space one last time before the divine liturgy begins. At the end of the doxology, a hymn of the resurrection is sung. In another little neat bit of liturgical math, this hymn 
alternates every other Sunday between two versions, an odd version and an even version. The final litanies and dismissal here are taken quietly in the altar. May God be praised.
fashion me out of dust with thine all pure hands. Thou didst stretch out thine arms upon the cross, calling forth from the earth my corrupt body, which thou hast received from the virgin. Glory to thy holy resurrection, O Lord. Thou didst assume mortality for my sake, and didst surrender thy soul unto death, O thou who by thy divine breath did instill in my soul, instill my soul within me, and having loosed the everlasting bonds, thou did glorify with incorruption, rising it up with thee. Hope holy Theotoko, save us. Rejoice, O wellspring of grace. Rejoice, O ladder and door of heaven. Rejoice, O lampstand and golden jar, thou unquarried mountain, or who for the world gave birth unto Christ, the bestower of life. You alone know the infirmity of mortal nature, and yet in compassion have taken on its form. So gird me with power from on high, that I may cry out to you. Holy is the living temple of your ineffable glory, O lover of mankind. Glory to your holy resurrection, O Lord. As God, O good one, thou hast taken pity on me who have fallen, and it is being in thy good pleasure to come down to me, thou hast by thy crucifixion raised me up to cry unto thee, Holy is the Lord of glory, immutable in goodness. Glory to thy holy resurrection, O Lord. And an hypostatic life, O Christ, clothing thyself in me, who hath become corrupt, in that thou art the God of loving kindness, and descending to my mortal dust, O Master, thou didst destroy the dominion of death, and having risen after three days of death, thou hast clothed me in incorruption. Most holy Theotokos, save us. Conceiving God in thy womb through thy O Holy Spirit, O Virgin, thou did remain unconsumed, for the bush which burned without being consumed, clearly to Moses the lawgiver, proclaiming thee beforehand to receive the unbearable fire. With the eyes of foresight have a quick the prophet perceived, you as a mountain overshadowed by divine grace and foretold that the Holy One of Israel would come forth from you for salvation and refashioning. Glory to thy holy resurrection, O Lord. Who is this Savior who issueth, who issueth forth from Edom, wearing a crown of thorns, his robe stained red, lifted up upon a tree? He is the Holy One of Israel, who is come for our salvation and restoration. Glory to thy holy resurrection, O Lord. Behold, ye disobedient people, and be ashamed, for he whom ye madly asked Pilate to lift on the cross, as a malefactor hath destroyed the power of death, and risen as God from the tomb. Most holy Theotokos, save us. O virgin, we know thee to be the tree of life, for it is no fruit, there is no, for it is no fruit deadly for men to eat, which thou hast brought forth, but the delight of everlasting life, to the salvation of us who hymn thee. You have enlightened the ends of the world by the brightness of your coming, O Christ, and made them radiant by your cross, enlightened with the light of your divine knowledge, the hearts of those who sing your praise with right belief. Glory to thy holy resurrection, O Lord. The Jews put the great shepherd and lord of the sheep to death by the tree of the cross, but the dead buried in Hades did he deliver like sheep from the dominion of death. Glory to thy holy resurrection, O Lord having announced peace by thy cross and proclaimed remission to those who held captive. O my Savior, thou didst put to shame him who hath dominion as though he were naked, by thy divine resurrection showing him to be impoverished. Most holy Theotokos, save us. Disdain not the request of those who petition thee with faith, O most pin and all pure one, but accept and convey them to thy Son, the one God and benefactor, for thee we have acquired as our intercessor. The utter deep has surrounded us. There is no one to deliver us. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. O oh, our God, save your people. For you are the strength of the weak and their restoration. Glory to thy holy resurrection, O Lord. We were grievously wounded by 
Elijah, and to the first created man, O Lord, for we have been healed by the wounds wherewith thou wast wounded for us, O Christ, for thou art the strength and correction of the weak. Glory to thy holy resurrection, O Lord. Thou hast led us up out of Hades, O Lord, having slain the all-devouring monster, and set his power at naught by thy might, O omnipotent one. For thou art life, light, and resurrection. Most holy Theotokos, The ancestors of our race rejoice in thee, O all pure virgin, receiving through thee the Eden which thou hast lost through transgression. For thou wast pure before giving birth, and art so after giving birth. As God, thou didst rise from the tomb in glory, raising the world with thyself. Human nature praises thee as God, for death has vanished. Adam exults, O master. Eve rejoices, for she is freed from bondage and cries to thee. Thou art the giver of resurrection to all, O Christ. Let us hymn as God the Almighty, who rose on the third day, who broke down the gates of Hades, who raised up from the grave those held there in ages past, who appeared to the murdering women, as he well was well pleased to do, telling them first to rejoice and to proclaim joy unto the apostles, and that he alone is the bestower of life. Wherefore, with faith, the women proclaim the signs of victory to the disciples. Hades groaneth, and death utters lamentation. The world is filled with gladness, and all rejoice with it. For thou, Christ, did grant resurrection unto all. We, the faithful, contemplate you as a spiritual furnace, O Theotokos. For as he who is highly exalted saved the free youths, so in your womb he prefashioned my entire human nature. The God of our fathers, who is praised and glorified above all, glory to thy holy resurrection, O Lord. The earth was afraid, the sun hid itself, the light grew dim, the divine veil of the temple was rent in twain, and the rocks split asunder. For the righteous one, the praise and all glorious God of our fathers, hung upon the cross. Glory to thy holy resurrection, O Lord. Wounded among the mortals of thine own will for our sake, as through helpless, O supremely exalted one, thou the praise and all glorious God of our fathers, decree all in praise, raise them up with thyself, with thy mighty hand. Most holy Theotokos, save us. Rejoice, O wellspring of water of eternal life. Rejoice, O paradise of delights. Rejoice, bulwark of the faithful. Rejoice, thou who knewest not wedlock. Rejoice, universal joy, through whom the praise and all glorious God of our fathers hath shown forth. In the furnace, as in a smelter's fire, the Israelite youth swim brighter than gold in the beauty of godliness. As they sang, bless the Lord, all you works of the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all throughout all ages. Glory to thy holy resurrection, O Lord. O word of God, who by thy did create and fashion all things, transforming the shadow of death into life everlasting by thy sufferings. Be do all of us the works of the Lord, unceasingly hand and supremely exalt for all ages. Glory to thy holy resurrection, O Lord. Thou to destroy distress and misery within the gates of strongholds of Hades, O Christ, raising from the tomb on the third day. Be do all thy works unceasingly hand and supremely exalt the Lord for all ages. Most holy Theotokos, save us. Let us give her who without seed supernaturally gave rise to Christ, the pearl of great Christ, through the divine effluence. And let us say, Bless the Lord, all you works the Lord, him and exalt him supremely for all ages. We praise thee, bless and we worship the Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.
Let us magnifying hymns for the birth year of God and Mother of Light. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. More honorable than the cherubim, and more glorious beyond compare than the seraphim. Without defilement, you gave birth to God, the Word, truth, and all joy, we magnify you. For he has regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, his fourth all generation shall call me blessed. For honorable and the cherubim. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name, and his mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. Temptations raging against us, that we may unceasingly magnify you. Glory to your holy resurrection, O Lord. How have the ubiquitous and disobedient people fought in evils, justified a proud and ungodly man, yet condemned to the tree, the tree, the righteous one, the Lord of glory, who we magnify as his meat. Glory to thy holy resurrection, O Lord. O Savior, thou unblemished Lamb, who taketh away the sins of the world, he who hath risen on the third day, who we glorify with Father and thy divine Spirit, and theologizing, we magnify the Lord of glory. Most holy Theotokos, save us. Save thy people whom thou hast acquired by thy precious blood, O Lord, 
and grant peace to thy churches through the supplications of the Theotokos, O thou who lovest mankind. Again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and preserve us, God, by your grace. Lord, have mercy. Remembering our most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious Lady, the birth giver of God and ever Virgin Mary, together with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another all our lives to Christ our God. Majesty, and yours the kingdom and the power and the glory. For all powers of heaven praise you, and we glorify you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Holy is the Lord our God. Holy is the Lord our God. Lord, holy is the Lord our God. Holy is the Lord our God. Over all peoples is Christ and glorify thy resurrection. 
Praise you, God and the saints. Praise him in the firmament of his power. O Lord, who endured the cross, the modest death, and rose from the dead, bring peace to our life and thou alone art almighty. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to the multitude of his greatness. O Christ, who by the resurrection made us Hades captive and raised them from the dead, count us worthy to sing hymns to him, glorify thee with a pure heart. Praise him with sound of trumpet. Praise him with psaltery and harp. Glorifying thy divine condescension, we hymn thee, O Christ. Thou was born of the Virgin, yes, was not separated from the Father. Thou didst willingly suffer the man to endure the cross and rise from the tomb. Issuing forth therefrom as from a bridal chamber that thou mightest save the world. O Lord, glory be to thee. Praise him with timbrel and dance. Praise him with strings and flute. When thou wast nailed to the tree of the cross, the might of the enemy was slain. Creation trembled for fear of thee, and Hades was made captive by thy might. Thou didst raise the dead from the grave and didst open paradise to the thief. O Christ our God, glory be to thee. Praise him with tuneful symbols. Praise him with symbols of jubilation. Let every breath praise the Lord. When the honorable woman lamenting arrived with haste at thy grave and found the tomb open, and learning of the new and all glorious wonder from the angel, they announced the apostles that the Lord had risen, granting the world the great mercy. Arise, O Lord my God, let thy hand be lifted high. Forget not thy offers to the end. We bow down before the divine wounds of thy sufferings, O Christ God, and to the sacrifice of the Master, which was revealed by God in time and the fullness of time. For the sun of righteousness hath illumined those who sleep in darkness, guiding them to never waning splendor. Glory be to thee, O Lord. I will confess thee, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will tell of all thy wonders. Be the earl tumultuous Jewish race, where are they who were the pilot? Let the soldiers kept watch say where the seals of the tomb are, where hath the buried one been laid, where is he sold, who hath not been sold? How was the treasure stolen? Why slander ye the resurrection of the Savior amongst the mixed with the Jews? He hath arisen and he is free among the dead and granted the world the great mercy. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Now and ever and ever to the ages of ages. Amen. You are most blessed virgin Theotokos, to the one who was born of you. Hades has been captured and Adam recalled. The curse has been anointed, annulled, and he is set free. Death has been slain, so we are given life. Blessed is Christ our God, whose good will it was. Glory to you. To the prayers of the Holy Fathers, O Lord Jesus Christ our God, have mercy upon us and save us.
teach me thy statutes. Blessed art thou, O Lord. Teach me thy statutes. Blessed art thou, O Lord. Teach me thy statutes. Lord, thou hast been a refuge from generation to generation. I said, Lord, have mercy on me. Heal my soul, for I have sinned against you. Lord, I have pled to thee. Teach me to do thy will, for thou art my God. For with thee is the fountain of life. Life in thy light shall we see the light. Continue thy mercy to those who know thee, holy God. 